Yesterday, Disneyland and the New York World's Fair. Tomorrow, a project so vast, it has already been called a whole new Disney World. And now, here is Walt Disney. Welcome to a little bit of Florida here in California. This is where the early planning is taking place for our so-called uh, Disney World project. Now, the purpose of this film is to bring you up to date about some of the plans for Disney World. But before I go into any of the details, I want to say just a word about the site of our Florida project. As you can see on this map, we have a perfect location in Florida, almost in the very center of the state. In fact, we selected this site because it's so easy for tourists and Florida residents to get here by automobile. Now, in larger scale on this map, our Florida land is located partly in Orange County and Osceola County, between the cities of Orlando and Kissimmee. And the important thing is that the Disney World is located just a few miles from the crossing point of Interstate 4 and Sunshine State Parkway. Florida's major highways carry motors east and west and north and south to the center of the state. The sketches and plans you will see today are simply a starting point. Our first overall thinking about Disney World. Everything in this room may change time and time again as we move ahead. But the basic philosophy of what we're planning for Disney World is going to remain very much as it is right now. We know what our goals are. We know what we hope to accomplish. And believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Productions. Today, I want to share with you some of our ideas for Disney World. Now, the prologue to this film told you some of the philosophy that made Disneyland in California what it is today. Of course, there'll be another amusement theme park in Florida, similar to the one in California. We're now developing a master plan that encompasses the theme park and all the facilities around it that will serve the tourists. First of all, I would like to introduce Mr. Robert C. Tyson, a very important figure in the United States Steel Company's widespread operations and chairman of their finance committee. Mr. Tyson. Mr. Austin J. Paddock, Administrative Vice President. <laughs> Mr. Joseph R. Dembeck, President of the United States Steel Realty Development Division. <laughs> and Mr. Edwin H. Gott, Chairman of the Board of the United States Steel Company, who has been kind enough to say that he would say a few words describing what they have in mind. Mr. Gott. Thank you, Mr. Tatum, Governor Kirk, Mr. Disney, ladies and gentlemen. After seeing that picture, I'm more excited than ever about being a part of this, and I'm sure, Governor, you must be excited after seeing that picture. Mr. Disney, uh, <clears throat> in your remarks, I can't quite understand why uh, you apologized about your relationship to the, some of the large companies that are here. <clears throat> Actually, I'd like to tell you that the real reason that uh, I'm down here with quite a few of our people uh, is that we hope some of this Imagineering would rub, rub off on us. And Mr. Tyson with us, <clears throat> he says we're down here uh, so that we can take a lesson in learning how to make a profit like Disney does. <clears throat> you know, for as long as I can remember, <clears throat> the name of Walt Disney has had a very special meaning for the people of this country and perhaps you could say for the people of the world. On behalf of the people of the United States Steel, <clears throat> I want to say that we're very pleased that our company is going to be a part of this exciting adventure which will bear the name of Walt Disney. I've been asked uh, to briefly review what United States Steel will play, what part it will play in this phase one of the Walt Disney World, and actually our part is a bold new experiment. There will be 750 rooms in the Contemporary Theme Hotel, 
and about 700 in the Polynesian-style hotel. The 1,450 rooms will be built by unitized or modular construction. Each room will be assembled at the ground level in a facility that will be built on this site for that purpose. This means that before each room leaves the ground, it will be completely furnished, and the basic utilities and the air climate control equipment will have been installed. <clears throat> Then after the door is closed, the self-contained room will be hoisted into place and the utilities will be plugged in. Of course, modular construction technique is not new, but there is an important difference between what's been tried before and what we'll be using here. With the cooperation of the fine architectural firm of Welton Beckett and Associates, <coughs> We will employ the world's first major use of a steel unitized construction system. And just as we know our friends from RCA consider their role in communications to be quite different from the years in the past, we look upon steel as a different material today, a versatile material capable of exciting and total design concepts. And by the use of steel framing, each unit in these two theme hotels will weigh approximately only six tons. And that's considerably less than the 30-ton hotel rooms that have been built by modular construction using other materials. There's another important reason, as has been pointed out, why I call this a bold new experiment. It's our belief that the use of steel in lightweight unitized construction <clears throat> will prove to be very adaptable for other hotels, and most important, for city housing and to help meet the surging needs of this great population explosion in America. We hope that this kind of innovation at Walt will be what Walt Disney wanted to generate when he challenged the American industry with this dream of Walt Disney World. And since we're all exposed a few moments ago to this exciting ideas uh, of Epcot, I can assure you that uh, U.S. Steel uh, is certainly looking forward to the opportunity to participate in any way that we might in the planning and construction of this experimental pro prototype community of tomorrow. You know, civilization is shaped by doers, the builders and the creators, who find ways to use materials and the forces of nature for the benefit of all mankind. Walt Disney is already attracting the doers and the builders and the creators. And U.S. Steel is very proud to be a part of this challenging program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Gott. The Disney organization has also entered into an agreement with the RCA company to jointly to develop the concept and the design of a computer-based, fully integrated, total communication system designed to provide operations and management information and all forms of communication throughout Walt Disney World. The focal point for the RCA project would be a systems communication center open to the public in the Tomorrowland section of the Magic Kingdom. Ours has been a long and productive association with the RCA Company, dating back to the very early days of sound and motion pictures. For many years, they have sponsored our wonderful World of Color television series. And we are proud that they will be associated with us here in Florida. We have with us today from RCA a number of their top executives, including Mr. George C. Evanoff, who is Vice President for Corporate Planning, don't know where Mr. Evanoff is sitting. Not he's not here. That's where he's needed to sit. Mr. Tom Patterson, Manager of Systems Development. Is Tom here? <laughs> and Mr. Chase Morrissey, Jr., Executive Vice President, Operations Staff, who has said that he would be willing to describe what they have in mind for us. Mr. Morrissey? Thank you very much, Don, Governor Kirk, Mr. Disney, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen of the press. 
RCA has had a long and pleasant association with the Disney family, and Walt was a valued friend to all of us. We're especially proud now to join in this imaginative project, which will demonstrate his concept of enriching urban life by humane use of technology. We welcome this opportunity because it offers a maximum challenge to our own creative and technical abilities. RCA has devoted much of its planning and research to comprehensive information and communication systems based on new and advanced technology. Last year, we organized a new corporate unit RCA Systems Development, combining the many kinds of talent needed to analyze and solve the complex problems in this field. One of the first assignments of this group was to help develop a total information communication system for the guests, residents, and management of Walt Disney World. We consider this concept a system of systems, a network to gather, process, communicate, and display any type of information that may be needed anywhere in Walt Disney World on an immediate and continuous basis. Initially, we propose these developments. A computer system to help handle the business side of the enterprise including a reservation system that tells what customers want to see and do, a hotel-motel communication system supported by color TV and special AM-FM broadcast, a closed-circuit TV system that will train employees, provide bulletins to guests, and monitor playgrounds and rides for safety purposes an automated monitoring and control system to guard against fire and check on equipment, a mobile communication system to transmit information and instructions. All of this is for 1971 when phase one begins. It is only the first step, however, in the proposed total system which would extend to the experimental, experimental prototype community of tomorrow, the jet airport, and the industrial park. We believe that the full installation would demonstrate how such systems can contribute to basic improvements in education, health, safety, utility operations, public administration, and transportation. As all of its operations are joined in a continuous flow of communications, Walt Disney World would itself function as an information system. This is the goal our planners have sought, and we believe that it has profound implications for the future. It is a privilege for us to work with the Disney organization in this effort along with the United States Steel and the other great companies that are here today. <laughs> Mr. Disney, our two companies are a lot alike. Walt was an innovator, a pioneer, a man with vision, and your organization embodies this spirit today. RCA, similarly, has been led by a man with the future in his blood, and it is, and it is his foresight which characterizes the technology with which we are involved with you here today. It is appropriate, therefore, that our two companies should work together in a project which holds so much promise for the future of human society. On behalf of RCA, I congratulate those who have contributed their ideas and energies to this great project, and I wish you all success. <laughs>